How many of you would be interested if I could save you $50,000? Would anybody like to save $50,000? Listen carefully and I'll save you some money. When one of my sons was seven years old, we went to the dentist. And the dentist said, uh, Mr. Hoven, this kid has a cavity. <clears throat> I said, yes, sir, I knew about it. Are you talking about the big one up here or just one in his tooth? He said, well, just the one in his tooth, we can, the only one we can fix. I said, okay, doc, let's fix it. So the dentist said, now listen, son, you're going to have to sit still, hold real still, open your mouth real wide, and I'm going to give you a shot. You're going to give me a shot. Yeah, calm down, calm down. I'm going to give you a shot. You're going to drill the bad stuff out and fill it with silver, and you'll be out of here in no time, no problem. Well, he tried to sit still. But when the dentist pulled out that 12-foot needle and poured in 10 gallons of lidocaine, he freaked out, lost control, kicking, screaming. Have you ever seen a kid do that in the dentist chair? Maybe you've done it yourself a time or two. He wanted out of there now. So the doctor called the nurse, and she came in and sat on him, and I sat on him, and the doctor sat on him, and we tried to hold him still, but man, you've got to hold real still for that stuff. And finally, the dentist was getting all nervous. He said, man, I, I can't do this. He's got to hold still. I said, Doc, let me take him outside and talk to him for a few minutes. Maybe I can calm him down. We went out to the van, sat in the back seat of the old Chevy van. <laughs> I said, son, I love you very much. He said, I know, Daddy. I said, son, I told you to sit still. You did not sit still. What happens when you disobey, Daddy? He said, you get a spanking. I said, that's correct. Bend over. And boy, did I give him a spanking. It was a doozy. A few minutes later, the smoke is rising off his hind end, and the tears are coming down his cheeks, and the pearls are coming out of his nostrils. I mean, the whole thing. I said, now listen, son, we're going to go back in the dentist office, and you're going to sit in that chair. And if you wiggle one time, I'm not going to yell at you. I'm just calmly going to take you back out to the van and give you two spankings like you just got. And then we're going to go back in the dentist office, and if you wiggle, I'm going to bring you back out and give you three spankings in a row like you just got. And we're going to go back and forth all day until I get tired. And I played tennis for years, son. I have an excellent forehand smash, as you well know. I don't think I'll get tired for a while. You know, folks, we went back in the dentist's office. That kid sat in the chair, opened his mouth, grabbed the handles, and didn't move a muscle. I don't think he even breathed for 20 minutes. Well, the doctor drilled it out, filled it up. We were headed out the door. And the dentist said, uh, Mr. Hoven, come here, please. I thought, uh-oh, <clears throat> what did I do now? He said, uh, listen, Mr. Hoven, uh, I don't know what you said to that kid outside, but I'd like you to work for me around here. <laughs> I said, no, sir, you don't want me working for you around here, man. The H-E-W would have me locked up the rest of my life. You know, the difference... When he was in the dentist chair the second time, he was still scared of the dentist. That had not changed. But something had changed. Now he was more scared of me. Great psychological difference. He's more scared of me than anything in the world. That's the way I wanted it. He said, Brother Hoven, how does that save me $50,000? Well, calm down, relax, I'm getting there. I pick up hitchhikers a lot. I used to drive 1,000 miles a week when I first got into evangelism. Now I fly almost all the time. But when I pick up hitchhikers, all the time, once in a while one guy will get in like this guy did one time and he said, hey, do you mind if I smoke in your car? I said, yes, sir, I do. i got to practically live in my car. And, you know, you're going to get out and the smell's still going to be here, so please don't smoke in my car. He said, oh, okay, no problem. I understand. I said, tell me, sir, uh, how much do cigarettes cost? He said, oh, man, $1.75 a pack. I got my calculator. I said, $1.75. I said, how many packs do you smoke a day? He said, oh, two and a half. I said, times two and a half. I said, do you smoke every day? He said, yeah, every day. I said, times every day. I said, how long have you been doing this? He said, oh, 35 years. I said, times 35 equals $50,000. I said, sir, you have spent $50,000 on smoke. You have made your own cloud. <laughs> you could have bought a brand new Corvette, a couple of Toyotas, Hondas, rollerblades, skateboards. Nope. You decided to buy a cloud instead. 
And now you are standing here on the street corner with your thumb out asking me for a ride because you couldn't get your cloud started this morning, could you? I said, you really ought to stop and think that through one more time. Spending $50,000 for a cloud is not a smart investment. By the way, $50,000 is a drop in the bucket. Wait till he goes to die from that habit and see what it costs. That's when it's really going to cost a bunch. That's why they want this universal health care. That's the Ted Kennedy philosophy. I want to drink and cuss and smoke and run around with wild women, and if I get sick, you've got to help me pay for it. You know, maybe we'd be smart to do like I do for the last nine years. We don't have any health insurance. No health insurance? No. It makes us watch our health, that's for sure. We don't go to the doctor for every little thing. Suppose nobody had health insurance. Prices would drop a lot. An awful lot. I'm not recommending that necessarily, but uh, the health insurance concerns me a little bit since over 70% of all health-related problems are self-induced. Some people have some kind of habit that ends up destroying their health and they want everybody to help pay for it. Well, look, if you want to destroy your health, that's fine, but I don't want to help pay for it. That's all. I asked this guy in the car, I said, sir, you spent $50,000 on smoke. I said, how old were you when you smoked the first cigarette? He said, I was about 13. I said, why did you ever smoke the first one? He said, well, I was with my friends. I said, you can stop right there. I know the rest of the story. When you get with dumb friends, you're likely to do something dumb. How many of you ever did something dumb when you were with somebody who was dumb? You get dumb and dumb together. There ain't no telling what's going to happen. Right? The problem that kid had when he was 13 years old, he was more afraid of his friends than he was of God. See, if he had had a good fear of God, when his friend said, hey, would you want to smoke a cigarette? He'd say, oh man, I can't do that. I don't have a mouth. What do you mean you don't have a mouth? What's that? He said, oh, this ain't mine. This is God's. Plus, I couldn't hold the cigarette anyway. I don't have any hands. These aren't mine. These are God's. I mean, really, if somebody had the right fear of God, you never would have started that habit. Now, some of you girls are going to get yourself in trouble because you're more afraid of that boyfriend than you are of God. And you're going to be out on a date someday, and he's going to say, I want to kiss. You're going to say, no. He's going to say, yes. You're going to say, no. He will say, yes. And he will be very persistent, I assure you. That's the way they're made. So. What you're going to have to do, girls, the only language they speak, when the boy says, I want to kiss, you say, no. He says, yes. You're going to say, you want to kiss? Yes. Okay. Close your eyes and pucker up. While he's puckered up, take off your shoe. Keep your eyes closed. Rear back. Might as well go way back. If you do it right, you can knock him into next week. When he wakes up, if he wakes up, he will have huge lips out to here. And he will be thinking for the first time in his teenage life, two thoughts at the same time. He will be thinking, wow, that hurt. And he will be thinking, that's the kind of girl I want to marry. <laughs> 